Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to NASDAQ College Football on CBS Sports. I'm Sean McDonough. It's great to have you with us for the 40th meeting all time in this rivalry. It has become the most heated rivalry in all of college football, as we saw during the pregame warm-ups, when the two teams had to be separated. Players and assistant coaches had to be separated by the officials. And in recent years, this has also become the most important rivalry in college football, as for the 10th consecutive meeting between these two teams, both will be ranked in the top 10 of the nation at game time. This year, Florida State, number one, still on the path to a possible national championship and an appearance in the Orange Bowl. Florida State cannot defend its national title. Rather, Florida cannot. But the Gators still are thinking about an Alliance Bowl. And if they can't win the national title, they certainly would like to make sure the Seminoles don't. And oh, yeah. Well, guys, last year, Steve Spurrier complained that FSU got away with some late hits against then quarterback Danny Werfel. And while he says that that late hit debate is history, Spurrier did tell me that he spoke to today's ACC officials about their interpretation of the late hit, and he's comfortable with it. Now, so far this season, just two of ten opposing quarterbacks have gone the distance against FSU. So Florida leads the all-time series, 25-12-2, and two, but since Steve Spurrier became the head coach, at Florida. Florida State has the advantage. Five wins, three losses, and one tie. Coach Spurrier's quarterback today is Noah Brindice, the senior from Fort Myers. Third string when the season began, but now starting for the third straight game. He's led them to victories over Vanderbilt and South Carolina the last two weeks. Much tougher foe today. He's on target to Travis McGriff on the first play from scrimmage out to the 24. This was a very important first series for Steve Spurrier. Although the game has just begun, you want to get your offensive team off to a good start against the best defense in the country. Make a few first downs, keep the chains moving, keep your defense off the field. Doug Johnson at quarterback. We expect to see all three quarterbacks play today. Johnson throws, and it is juggled and caught! What a catch at midfield by Jacquez Green. Jacquez Green for Florida lined up at wide receiver. He's, he's, he's got 54 catches on the year. He's the outside man. He just runs down the field against man-to-man. -man. Tay Cody, 27 on the coverage. Green turns around and catches the ball on the rebound. It's just a great individual effort by one of the best receivers in the Southeastern Conference. Now it's Brendice back in. Spurrier changing quarterbacks on virtually every play. Fred Taylor, lots of running room. A capacity crowd on hand at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium in Gainesville. First big play of the game comes early. Fourth down and three for Steve Spurrier and the Gators. They're going for it at the 30. The toss. Taylor pitches it to Jock West Green. Johnson is wide open inside the 20 and out of bounds at the 12 yard line. What a play on fourth down. Jock West Green, remember, was a high school quarterback. Florida runs a reverse play here, and Jock West Green is going to throw it back to the quarterback. But watch number 18. He's going to be wide open for a touchdown. Jaquez Green didn't see him. He laid it off to the quarterback, Doug Johnson, for the first down. But it could have been a touchdown for Florida. And that was a late hit called against Shevin Smith out of bounds. And as a result, they've moved the ball inside the seven-yard line. Steve Spurrier known for him. Johnson back in. Taylor right up the middle. Touchdown. This is the isolation play that Florida likes to run. Watch the fullback right there, number 40, Rod Frazier. He leads on Sam Cord, the All-American linebacker from Florida State. That's the block that punches the ball into the end zone. Steve Spurrier happy with that opening drive. What a way for the offense to get going. That's the kind of backer adjusting your defense, being able to see set recognition. 
Hand off by Brendeis. Taylor fumble. Sam Coward picks it up. Touchdown, Seminoles. Lamont Green knocked it out. behind that pregame fracas you saw uh, between these two teams, and this is it. On the road, Florida State has a tradition of trampling the emblems on the opponent's field. The Gators had decided before the game they weren't going to stand for that, and when they saw the Seminoles start trampling their emblem, they went after them, and that's how it started, guys. Chicken, they, that always happens. Johnson throws short. Taylor fumbles again. That's a free football, and the Seminoles say they've recovered, and they have. Corey Simon came up with a free football. Shevin Smith knocked it free. Four for four. A left footer out of the hold of a backup quarterback, Marcus Outson, right down the middle. And Florida State takes a four-point lead. 10-6, Seminole. Less than two minutes remaining in the first quarter. Play on a return. It's huge, not only field position, but psychologically. Plenty of running room for Bo Carroll off the pass from Johnson, and he's out to the 46-yard line. Similar. 15 yards from the end of the run. Oh, boy. They didn't make the first down. First and 10. Melvin Pearsaw is lucky, number 81. He wasn't ejected from the game for that. By passing to set up the run. Busby on third and long. Throws, man, open. It's Menace inside the 10 with a first down. Three receivers to the right. Busby under a blitz. Touchdown. Pearsall wide open. Two yards into the end zone. Experiment. An experiment that has worked pretty well, to say the least. Brindice back in. He throws it high. Caught by Jacquez Green. Green out to the 46-yard line. Sam Cowart had a race downfield to get involved in the tackle. 22-yard game. See the difference in the delivery between Brindice and Johnson. Brindice doesn't have quite as strong an arm, but he has enough to get that to Travis McGriff. Down to the five yard line. When you think Florida's out of it, they strike. First and goal from the five. Johnson in the end zone. Touchdown, Travis McGriff. But it was a quick strike by the Gators, reminiscent of the Florida teams of yesteryear. CBS Sports coverage of NASDAQ College football will continue after a word from your local station. Steve Spurrier was really upset that the two-point play failed, and the reason he was was Jacquez Green, his best receiver, was wide open in the end zone. And they couldn't find him and get the ball to him. That Busby is 20 and 1 as a starter in his career, and he nearly threw an interception. It should have been. He hit Dwayne Thomas right between the five and the two. And the noise has pinned our decibel meter down below. Looked like Busby's primary receiver on that play fell down. E.G. Green, he tripped and fell. He was open, but he just stumbled about the 35-yard line of Florida. Keith Cottrell will put it away to Jacquez Green. Looks like Florida's going to come on a punt block here. Cottrell was a quarterback in high school. Something to keep in mind. Bad punt caught on the run by Green. Bad direction by Green for just a moment, but here he goes. Jacquez Green. Out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Chased out by Khalid Abdullah, a 31-yard punt, but a 28-yard return. Spurrier has been looking for the right combination of the offensive line all year. He's started seven different combinations. Nine different offensive linemen have started a game this year. Green, the fade stop, and the catch made at the 24-yard line. He pulled up right in front of Tay Cody to make the catch. And that's a first down on a 16-yard game. Well, Steve Spurrier said he was going to work real hard to get the ball to Jacquez Green. And sure enough, 
Jaquez Green has come up huge in this first half. He's working against Tay Cody, 27. He just out leaps him and watch the concentration and the hand strength. He held off of that ball with his finger. That enabled the ball to get launched. Brindice from the four, hands it off. Taylor untouched for a touchdown. The Florida line gets a push and the tailback Taylor's able to cut back into that huge void when you get a push at the line of scrimmage it creates running lanes and the Florida offensive line did that once again lock running now as they have moved the chains 125 left of the half one timeout left for Florida State the Knowles trailed by a point Busby going long for Warwick batted down on a great defensive play by Weary back in America Busby hit as he delivers. It is intercepted. Tico Brown across midfield. And down at the 34-yard line. Ed Chester put the hit on Busby as he... What a first half this has been. The number one team of the country, Florida State, heads to the locker room down by a point, knowing very well the, the other number one team in the nation Michigan is still undefeated with a win today here's Michelle well you take a lead into the end at halftime why is the alternating quarterback thing working and will you stay uh, with it no we just thought both of them deserved to play probably and hopefully something good will happen but uh, yeah it's a close game anything can happen uh, I hope those extra points don't come back to haunt us defensively you wanted your secondary to hold up and you wanted your line to pressure Busby how happy are well, you with those we, efforts we've done pretty well they've run the draw play too well but uh, it's a good game. Everybody's playing hard. Good luck, Coach. Down a long three. Busby back in the shotgun. One minute played, second half. Florida has a one-point lead. Busby forced from the pocket. Has a man open, E.G. Green. Down to the 30-yard line. Down passes. Third down and seven. Forced to throw it short, and Miner's in trouble. Down, back at the 13-yard line. Tony Sebastian Janikowski, one for one today. Just to give Florida State the lead, and it is good from 31 yards. Florida State, the best team against the run in the nation. Florida's rushed for 51 yards today. Johnson back in on third down and two. Everybody up on the line for the Florida State defense, and Taylor runs right by them. Brent Taylor may go. the middle linebacker. Bush couldn't get off the block quick enough. That's exactly one of the plays they ran against Florida State in the Sugar Bowl, also for a touchdown. The sweep to Fred Taylor. Collins Cooper, they'll try to kick the extra point here. They haven't had a conversion today. Cooper missed his only try. And they have a two two-point conversion passes fall incomplete, but now they have a conversion. And a five-point lead on the longest run of Fred Taylor's career, 61 yards. The louder stadium in the country, we have not heard it. Busby throws, has a man, E.G. Green, in the Florida territory with a first down. All the way to the 38, tackled by Fred Weary. Five and a half minutes left, third quarter. Miner got hit and stayed on his feet. Travis Miner, what a run! Sebastian Janikowski. Not as deep. He might be getting a little leg weary, although it was about three or four yards deep and bobbled by Carroll and alertly downed, and then a shot taken as Elijah Williams came over. 
Brian Allen gave him a pop. Close right here. The whistle had blown clearly. I heard the whistle. I, I think that should have been a late hit. My, my judgment, I heard the whistle all the way up here. I think he could have pulled off. The 46-yard line. Apparently Johnson thought he took a late hit. He was barking in the face of the referee, Terry McCauley, after he got up. He felt like Greg Spires, number 90, hit him late. He let the official know about it. Once that ball's released, the quarterback should be protected. Like a face mask. Face mask, ground. that's what it was. Now, there's no question about that. Well, excellent field position. A lot of coaches would have, would have hunted that ball, but not Steve Spurrier. Busby sacked way back at the 24-yard line. Center to start this possession. Florida down by a point. Taylor turns the corner and has room. Cuts back across midfield. Off the rushing total. That's the reason Florida State has gone in reverse. They were up over 100. That pass is caught. The feast Kareem takes the pass from Johnson. He's down at the 16-yard line. Now Collins Cooper from 28 yards to give Florida the lead again. And it's a line drive. No good. Wide left. over the head of Johnson. Johnson in trouble in the end zone. Throws incomplete and he's lucky that isn't grounding. Oh. Should get the ball in good field position. Another high snap handled by Stevenson. Another low kick. Warwick started at the 40. Warwick with some running room trying to get outside. Peterson forced him to stop. Now he reverses his field and he's giving up the yardage. Now he has room on the other side. What a run by Warwick. He ran about 100 yards. The three-yard line of Florida. The toss. Miner with a burst of speed. Miner inside the 20. Knocked out of bounds at the six-yard line. First and goal from the six. The fullback, Abdullah. Second and goal from the four. Miner, 141 yards rushing, gets the pitch. Trying to get outside. Bounces off a tackler. Eric Glenn checks in at wingback. He's a reserve fullback. Third and goal from the two. Miner running right. Stopped at the two-yard line. Johnny Rutledge, Dwayne Thomas, Willie Rogers all in on the play for Florida. It says an extra point, but from a tough angle. 20-yard field goal. Janikowski booms it through. And he's three for three today. And the kicking game, the difference in the game at the moment, that missed extra point on the first touchdown of the game by Florida, kind of threw Florida's approach on every subsequent score out of whack. Well, and and there's no question about it that the, the, the lever has switched over to Florida State in terms of the kicking game. They certainly have had the better place kicking today. And this guy's had a phenomenal day, not only kicking points, but kicking all. We need to tell Dane Seymour, she has a Tough act to follow tonight. The number one ranking hanging in the balance, perhaps on this drive. Could be a last chance opportunity for Florida with 2.33 remaining. Gators started their own 20. Johnson lofts it deep. Green is behind the defense. He's at the 35. He's at the 25. And he's tackled at the 17 yard line by Tay Cody. came with the blitz. They blitzed their inside linebacker. Samari Roll trying to cover man-to-man -man against Jaquez Green. What an afternoon Jaquez has had there for Florida. 63 yards. The redshirt freshman Cody with the big tackle that saved the touchdown. And perhaps the number one ranking. Doug Johnson remains at quarterback. Draw play to Taylor. Big hole left. Taylor may go. Fred Taylor! The one yard line. The 
It's a little draw play by Florida, and Zach Pillar, number 69, the left tackle, along with Ryan Kalich and the tight end. Those are the guys. They make this play work. It's just a little slip draw to Fred Taylor. He finds that crease, breaks it outside for the huge game. Kevin Smith banged him out. Johnson remains the quarterback. Taylor the lone back. First and goal at the one. Taylor to the end zone. Touchdown! They went 80 yards in three plays. Perhaps too quickly. Fourth rushing touchdown of the day for Fred Taylor. Well, Sean, I hate to say I told you so, but at the beginning of the telecast, we mentioned Florida's offensive line and Fred Taylor. Could they keep this game alive for Florida? I think they have today, and the quarterback play between Brendeis and Doug Johnson has been beyond expectations. And Johnson, who was Vanished to the side. Now Florida State's got two downs to make 10 yards. Busby on a four-man rush. Throws. Intercepted. Clay Thomas. Deafening noise being made by the Gator fans, and you have the feeling they're cheering just as loud in the state of Michigan for this play. Watch number 52, Dwayne Thomas. He drops in zone coverage, plays a curl route to perfection. He dropped an earlier interception in this game, but he didn't drop that one. And Bob Stoops, the defensive coordinator, you got to give him a little credit. He's played zone and man all afternoon, and his defense has hung on against the number one team in the country in the coaches' ball. Brindis takes the final snap. And Florida still alive for an Alliance Bowl. A huge victory. Sealed by Thomas's interception. Michelle Tafoya. Coach, you said this was your big game. This was the bowl game for you guys. This was it. Talk about the effort of this team today. Well, obviously, God's still smiling on the Gators. Quincy Green, Doug Johnson, our defense. You know, everything didn't go perfect today, but our kids just played their hearts out, and we got a big, close victory. This was good for us. We needed this one. All right, Coach, we've got a couple of your players standing by, and we know he's something. Yeah, he is something. John Quest Green, you set up just about everything scoring play today with big plays. Talk about this rivalry and what it meant for you to come up so big today. You know, it was a big win for us. You know, we had a lot of disappointments early in the season. And, um, I knew me and Fred Taylor made a lot of big plays for our offense. You know, our chance to win was very great. Uh, and, um, you know, I made a lot of big plays. And, um, team counted me to make a lot of big plays. And, um, we came on top. I heard you come off after
after uh, one big play just late there in the fourth quarter and saying, you know, that's the ACC over there, but we're the SEC. Yeah, and the SEC and Tina laid down for FSU, you know. We were saying, you know, ranked number one five or six weeks ago, so we knew we could play with, um, with Seminoles and all. We came on show tonight. Congratulations on a terrific game. Thank you. All right, let's send it back up to you, Sean. All right, Michelle. The ceiling play, the interception by Thomas. The first interception of his career. And he's a senior playing in his final home game. What a time to pick off the first of his Gator career. Here's Michelle. All right, back now with Fred Taylor. Early in this game, you fumbled twice, and your friend Terry Jackson was there with you on the sideline saying, man, get back in there. Not only did you get back in there, you scored four touchdowns. Yeah, my teammates, they stuck with me. Um, at one point, I wanted to put my head down, but everyone told me there's no count on a man up above, say a quick prayer, and he'll make everything work out, and everything worked out fine. Everyone came into this game talking about the amazing defense of Florida State. You guys didn't make them look quite so amazing. They, we, we knew the ACC competition not, not all that tough. We play a lot of good teams in the SEC. We just want to come out here and play 60 minutes um, from the heart, just all out. How much does this make up for some of the disappointments earlier in the season, the two losses? It's, it's, it's probably the best feeling you can have. I mean, it's my last game, so I, I feel great. Congratulations, Fred. Thank you. Sean? So many great stories. You're looking at one of them. Noah Brindice, a senior, walked on here, becomes a starter in the huge game, alternating with Doug Johnson. He was another great story. Green was Jacquez Green. Taylor was Taylor. And Florida went back to its form of the first five games of the year. Well, as all great rivalry games do, they come down in the final few seconds. Florida prevailed against a strong Florida State team, and you could just sense the relief in the Florida program because they've really struggled the last five weeks of this season. Now for Michelle Tafoya, Terry Donahue, and our entire CBS NASDAQ College football crew, I'm Sean McDonough saying so long from Gainesville, Florida. Once again, the final score of tonight's game Florida 32 and Florida State 29. The Florida State Seminoles knocked from the ranks of the unbeaten and the number one ranking.